I'm Namaste guys, Christian Arlon, Life Enhancement Consultant, giving you a big and beautiful shout out on this Monday evening here in Oxnard, California. It's uh, about 8.30 p.m. Pacific Standard <clears throat> Time. And I'm jumping on real quick. We have had a very, very long day of teacher training and pranic healing with Master Stephen Coe. Uh, probably about a uh, hundred or so instructors from around the Midwest and West Coast um, all coming together for the purpose of being reminded of Grandmaster Chol Koksui's teachings, his techniques, his practices, and how to spread his work properly, rapidly, and enthusiastically throughout our areas, um, whichever city, county, state we're part of. And man, uh, we started about 8.30 this morning, and we're gonna go to about 10 o'clock this evening. <clears throat> so it's been, uh, it's been relatively intense, but it's, it reminds me of a quote, um, and we're about ready to get back into class, but it reminds me of a quote, <clears throat> or a sutra from Grandmaster Chol Koksui, which goes, the teacher is a perpetual student, now he was referring to himself, he was referring to his lineage, and he's referring to all the instructors that are part of the Pranic Healing Organization that we are perpetual students. We are constantly studying and practicing the teachings that were written in our teachers' books, in other teachers' books, in other schools, in other systems, and other modalities. Um, and Master Chola himself was a perpetual student learning about cars, learning about politics, learning about economics, learning about nature, learning about mm, things dealing with <clears throat> things dealing with physics, like constantly stimulating the mental body to become a better instrument of goodwill and the will to do good and to practice the ability to discern truth from non-truth, truth from falsehoods. And I've always admired that. I remember many stories <clears throat> of Master Chol going into bookstores, and he would um, he would have uh, two different masters carrying his books for him. You know, they would walk out with 10, 15 new books, and then Master Chol Kuksui would go through, you know, the book very, very quickly, and he would highlight. This is important, this is important, this isn't important, that's not important, but you know, he would read a 200 page book <clears throat> and he would say, this one sentence is the valuable information, this one sentence is the jewel, is the nugget, the rest of it, not relevant. But <clears throat> to have the humility to be willing to learn from somebody else and to have the discernment to accurately judge whether that information was was um, accurate or not, was truth or not. What a skill set. And <clears throat> it's actually kind of funny. The place I'm sitting in right now, I'm sitting in the hotel lobby <clears throat> of the Embassy Suites, Mandalay Bay, which is right on the beach um, here in Oxnard, California. I remember sitting here two years ago it might have even been three years ago, and I had like a really high level discussion with a fellow practitioner who was having relationship problems, and I was having relationship problems as well. And so I remember this being like, this spot, this exact location that I'm sitting in um, was a really beautiful experience between me and a few other pranic healing and Arhati yoga practitioners. And man, time flies when you're learning and having fun. There's Fernando. <laughs> What's up, son? I'm doing a live stream. Do you remember right over there, like two years ago, we had our our big discussion? Yes. Right? Yeah, it was a good time. So um, the quote for today is, the teacher is a perpetual student. So we're just covering that topic. Have fun in class. I'll be there in like a few minutes. Oh, of course. So... <clears throat> So that's what makes um, Kugo Atma Namaste. That's what's so beautiful about 
the work that we do, the work of personal development and the work of spiritual development, that it is never ending. There's always um, another rabbit hole to go down. There's always another area of your life to improve. There's always another way of understanding yourself and other people, the environment, the cosmos, the physical world, the inner world. So, so if you think you know it all, you don't. If you think you've heard it all, you haven't. If you think there's nowhere else to go, then you're dead in the water because what's the old saying? You're either growing or you're dying. You're either growing or you're rotting, right? So <clears throat> I think to myself, we've been in class for um, about 12 hours today and we still have more class time to go. Uh, pretty up, and I'm gonna stay. And there's all these notes that I've been taking in my phone. I haven't been writing them down. I've actually been recording them in my phone, you know, through the notepad. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, I've heard this before. I've heard this principle before. I've heard this story before. I've heard this metaphor before. I've heard this technique before. How can I understand it better? How can I apply this in a different area of my life? How can I? Copa, I'm a namaste. How can I? 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 Amanda, I'm a namaste. So it's constantly f trying to figure out how you can utilize the information that you once thought you knew really well and um, and apply it in a different way or in a deeper way to, Im to improve a different area of your life or to improve the area of your lives faster. Tammy, I'm a namaste. I'll give you a really funny example about um, just because you, Stephen, I'm a namaste. Just because you know something doesn't mean you remember it and doesn't mean you practice it and doesn't mean you've mastered it. So I remember, uh, for those of you who joined our Twin Hearts meditations before, we do physical exercises before the meditation. Actually, I'm a namaste. We do physical exercises before the meditation. So, you know, we basically exercise from the top of our head to the soles of our feet for the purpose of cleansing out any and all disease, congested stress energies. So when we sit and meditate, rather than meditating in stress, we meditate in a clean energy body. Rather than meditating in anxiety, we meditate in a clean energy body, right? And so there have been people who would come to our physical location in Denver to do the meditation physically in, in person with us and these were people who um, had been doing the exercises for a minimum a minimum of a year right a minimum of a year and then at certain times in the class I would say okay um, John or Susan or whomever take over the exercises and they would forget right because they got in such a groove and such a um, like they were so used to being led but they weren't used to understanding why they do the exercises that they do in the order that they do them so that they would completely forget even though we had done these exercises dozens and dozens and dozens and dozens of times over that year so what's my point it's that just because you know something doesn't mean you understand something and just because you understand something necessarily doesn't mean you're practicing that and just because you're practicing something doesn't mean you've mastered it so you have to know it you have to remember it you have to practice it and you have to master it in order to integrate it into your life so as I'm sitting in class and hearing these same stories or hearing these same techniques or hearing these same um, principles it doesn't mean I'm practicing all of them and it doesn't mean I've mastered all of them right so again the teacher is a perpetual student as soon as you think you know it all dead in the water uh, what does Steven say just walked in after 210 miles on the road left this a.m. don't know what your what you're talking about just yet but whatever it is I wish to lend my support thanks Steven we focus on what we want we are aware of symptoms yet we get better faster when we focus on how we want to be I like that Hugo says Jugo says 
I have a ballroom teacher who told me that he had seen every, everything a dancer could do. Unfortunately, I, I died before I could show him some videos with moves I'm sure he has never seen before, especially that he was from the old school. I agree with you, even in dancing, somebody discovers something new all the time. Top down is correct. Exercises and other higher controls, the lower, lower nourishes the higher. He died, I meant, he, he died, I meant? Didn't you say he died? Did I read that wrong? Who told me that I, oh, I died, oh, he died. Yeah, I was kind of figuring that out, okay, yeah. So he died. So that's a perfect example, right? Another way of looking at it is in martial arts, right? You have a white belt, then a yellow belt, then a green belt, then a purple belt, then a brown belt, then a black belt in most schools. Some schools have different colors and different sequences, less colors, more colors. Um, but in general, you go from white to black. But then the higher level schools will have that the black belt will then turn back into a white belt that's twice as thick. What is that represent what is that a representation of? Harita, but namaste. It's a representation that we are always learning. We are always going back to basics. We are always mastering what we've already been taught. Um, and we did a stream about this a couple weeks ago that there we don't need to read a hundred books on business and prosperity in order to be prosperous and successful. We need to read 10 of the best books and then master the principles within those 10 books and we will be successful in any endeavor that we partake on, right? So it's not about acquiring more and more and more knowledge, it's about remembering the valuable knowledge that we've acquired and practicing that knowledge over a consistent and persistent period of time. So I've been practicing pranic healing for 15 years. I've read all the books by Grandmaster Cho Kok Sui, backwards and forwards, but I still have not mastered all of the principles, the techniques, the teachings within all of those books. Probably haven't even mastered the, the techniques taught in the basic book, the Miracles Through Pranic Healing book, the simplest, quote unquote, simplest book. But that simple book is the foundation for which you build every other aspect of your practice within pranic healing or hatha yoga. If you haven't mastered the basics, you have a weak foundation and you'll go higher and higher and higher in your practice and then you'll fall. Right? What's the old saying? Pride cometh before the fall. And pride is when you don't have a solid foundation, you keep going higher and higher in your spiritual practice, you think you know it all because you've studied a lot, you've read a lot of books, you've met a lot of teachers, you've got a lot of blessings, and you think you are better than others, know more than others, an expert, right? And then, bam, the, pro the, the, the fall happens. And so I have to keep reminding myself of that, right? I see people um, in the room that I'm like, like, wow, these people are like brand new. They've been in pranic healing for a year, two, three years. They're already in the instructor program and they're taking copious notes. Well, I should also be taking copious notes. Oops, hold on everyone. Uh, what is this saying? Mm -mm -mm. Many low network, okay. Let me see if I go outside if it changes anything. Let's see, I just might, low network. You know what I should have done? I should have connected to the Wi-Fi. So Steven says, many divisions in each color when I started martial arts in the 70s, it took over 10 years at 10 plus hours a week and we had to take a black belt from somebody who already earned one. There you go. So that's a, that's a big deal, right? Um, it looks like for some reason, our connection is kind of squirrely right now and I don't want to cut you guys off. But that being said, if you are in need of healing, go to ChristianRLong.com. Let us assist you on your path from bringing you where you are to where you ultimately want to be in the shortest time possible. And I look forward to connecting with you very, very soon. This is Christian R. Long, Life Enhancement Consultant, wishing you a beautiful day, a beautiful week, and a beautiful life. Atma, namaste. Bye-bye, guys. Hopefully the connection worked.